active and recall. These are probably the two words which we have been consistently talking about ever since Ali Abdal first introduced us to these two terms. And basically active recall is just the act of testing yourself and actively trying to remember information from your brain and this is how our brain basically consolidates information in a long term memory. Now the biggest and the most common objection that people have whenever we talk about active recall is that well active recall is the act of testing yourself on the information that you have learned. But how exactly are you supposed to learn information when you, when you encounter that piece of information for the very first time? I mean you can't just simply recall that information without having, without having learned it first, right? And secondly, there is also a huge mistake which 90% of students do make while practicing active recall which I will talk about later on in this video. What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. So I'll be dividing this video into two major chunks. Firstly, I talk about the idea of learning new content when it comes to active recall. And secondly, I'll be talking to you guys about the biggest problem that most students make while practicing active recall. And now without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Now most of us actually treat active recall as a revision tool when we are say revising for our exams, right? And that's when we quiz ourselves and try to recall that information from our brains in order to really test and see where we stand um, for the exam. Well that is exactly not true because active recall is actually a learning tool within itself whenever we encounter a certain problem or a certain concept for the very first time as well. And how exactly does this happen? Well this is where we have the so-called generation effect. So generation is basically quite simple. It is the act of actually trying to solve a problem or answer a certain question before being presented with the answer. And this can also be applied to whenever we are learning something for the very first time. And according to research, this is actually quite efficient because whenever we encounter a problem for the first time and then we try and attempt the answer, what we're actually doing is that we're making this entire process of learning much more active by, you know, actively um, trying to connect our already existent information that we have or knowledge in our brain to this new piece of information that we are trying to learn. So this sort of strengthens the synapses that we are trying to make in our brains all the time because again it's all about those synapses within your brain and you know neuronal 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 connections. Make It Stick is the book that I recommend to every single student out there and it's a book by Peter C. Brown which talks about all these different study techniques and he quotes in his book that that um, it's better to solve a problem than to memorize a solution. It's better to attempt a solution and supply the incorrect answer than to not make the attempt. So in a nutshell what I'm actually trying to say is that the fact that we think that okay in order to do active recall we need to learn that content first because well we need to learn it in order to be able to actively retrieve that information that is actually quite wrong and that's a wrong perception simply because the act of generation that is trying to think what the answer could be before actually being presented with the solution to the problem we are actually strengthening the connections between this new piece of, of information that we're going to get with the already existing knowledge in our brains and hence this again makes the process of active recall much more efficient. So the act of generation actually primes our brain and makes us more receptive to learning new content. And now let's talk about the biggest mistake that most students actually make while practicing active recall. So what happens is that you are sitting there, you know, trying to do active recall, thinking that, okay, I'm going to ace my exam. And then you start doing some practice questions. And while looking at those practice questions, you're like, okay, well, I know this one, I know this one, and I know this one. So let's just move on to the next page and the next questions. Well, that, my friends, is wrong because this is exactly where we are overestimating our competence, also known as the mm -hmm. Mastery illusion. And this is where Peter Brown in his book Make It Stick talks about the act of calibration, which is simply the act of aligning your judgments of what you know and what you don't know with objective feedback. 
And the only way of actually getting that objective feedback is by not skipping those questions unless you have some sort of a meter or a gauge which can actually tell you if your questions if or, or where your where your competence actually lies because most times we humans tend to overestimate our competency so tools like Anki are actually a great tool for this because that's like an automated algorithm which tells you all the time where your competency actually is but actually in order for that even that algorithm, algorithm to work is that the idea is that you need to answer all questions you constantly think that okay well I know this I know this let me just move forward that's called the mastery illusion. And one simple example of the mastery illusion can be seen amongst students or myself when I was doing this, uh, when we are doing the act of rereading. So you have these tons of notes and you are rereading your notes again and again. And when you read those same notes for the fourth or for the third time, you are thinking, that, okay, well, I know this. Well, actually you don't, unless and until you test yourself on that, you don't know. You don't have this objective feedback system which will tell you what you know and what you don't know. When when you are rereading what, what is actually happening is that you are getting fluent in the text because you are becoming more and more familiar with the words in that text and hence when you read that same text for the third or fourth time you're like okay man I know this actually you don't you you just are familiar with the words that are used in that text which is increasing your fluency and more fluency does not mean that you have better competency aka the mastery illusion that's a wrap for today's Sapiens. I hope you found the video useful and if you did, then you might also want to check out this video which will surely add some value to your life. And before you leave, please hit that subscribe button because 78% of you guys who are watching my videos are not subscribed to the channel. I mean guys, what's stopping you? Just hit that subscribe button for the algorithm. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.